Hi. Um, I think I need my clicker. Sorry. Hi, how are you? I know you're waiting for the break, so I'll make this quick. Uh, I'm going to be talking about PyTorch today. So I work at Facebook AI building uh, deep learning tools. And I've been doing that for a while. Uh, our latest iteration is PyTorch. It's a deep learning framework. And uh, there's a big ecosystem forming around this deep learning framework. And I think uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what PyTorch is, uh, what features it offers. And then I'll also tell you about how I, I, I'm trying to connect to um, how you could use it and uh, how, how you could integrate it with some of the Spark stack, uh, the, uh, the Databricks stack as well. Uh, so to kick off, uh, what is PyTorch in one slide? All right. So it's uh, a library that has NDRA tensor, uh, like NDRA, uh, uh, NDRAs, and like they have GPU support as well. So you can think of this as something like NumPy. Uh, but also works on GPUs. And we also announced that soon uh, PyTorch will work with uh, Google's TPUs as well. Um, that's one way to use it as just as a standard NDRA data processing uh, tool. And uh, you can, you, we also have sparse tensors, so if you have a lot of tabular data, um, you can use these sparse operations. The other thing it has is an automatic differentiation engine, so you can, uh, auto, you can, uh, like do deep learning, reinforcement learning. And we have supporting utilities around doing a deep learning, such as gradient-based optimization. If you want to do stochastic gradient descent, Adam, RMS prop, all these algorithms are packaged in a nice way. So to give you like a quick overview uh, of the package itself, the NDRA library, you can, if you're familiar with NumPy, it's going to be very natural for you to think about a NumPy uh, np.ndra has an equivalent on the PyTorch side called torch.tensor. And there's 200 plus operations, your standard indexing, slicing, uh, math, uh, linear algebra operations. And uh, any operation you do, you can select to do it on the CPU or GPU. And we have very fast acceleration engines for NVIDIA GPUs. Um, so just to put, uh, like, if you take a PyTorch program and a NumPy program side by side, I just want to put this slide to show you how similar their uh, programming models are. And the NDRA uh, tensor library that we have, um, a quick overview into how to use it. You just import the package with import torch, and then you can create a tensor. You can print it, the standard things you would expect from a Python package. You can create random tensors. We have a very rich distributions library as well, where you can construct all kinds of probability distributions and draw samples from them. Uh, you can print sizes. You can slice and dice uh, like that you would expect. Advanced indexing, you can ask for particular slices in certain dimensions. Um, and then you can do math on the tensors that you create. And uh, it does what you expect it to do. Uh, and then one of the interesting things that PyTorch does, it, it, it has a very uh, efficient NumPy bridge that is uh, with a zero memory copy design, which means that you can convert PyTorch tensors to NumPy arrays and vice versa um, for almost f as if they're free operations. So the, the, one of the resulting things that you can do because of this is if you're in the PyTorch stack, let's say you're doing your deep learning with PyTorch, um, but you need certain functionality that's actually in scikit-learn or you know, the scipy package, you can dip down into that ecosystem uh, for parts of your operations as well. And again, if you have a NumPy array, you can again convert it to a PyTorch tensor as well. Um, so the other thing, as I mentioned, PyTorch has strong support for GPU acceleration. And what we provide is you, on, on a tensor, you can call .cuda on the tensor. And then your tensor's memory is shipped to the GPU device you have. And then any subsequent operations that are done on your tensor are done on GPUs. And generally, they're much faster because you have nice um, parallelizable operations. Um, we also provide a neural networks package. So generally, what you do with, uh, when you try to define neural networks is you define your layers, especially the layers that have uh, weights and biases, uh, like convolutions and linear layers, in your constructor 
of a standard Python class. And then you define a forward function. And this forward function, this Python function, is your neural network. So you can express uh, all kinds of models uh, by defining them in this Python forward function. And then when PyTorch executes this forward function, uh, that itself is the definition of the neural network. So it's a very dynamic language. The way you define your neural network can have ifs, conditionals, and so on. So uh, the last thing we provide is an optimization package so you can do uh, various optimizations, um, op like gradient, de gradient descent based optimization algorithms. Uh, here what I show you is a typical training loop that you have when you're training neural networks. You loop over your data set and then you just zero the, zero the gradients from the previous, uh, previous iteration. And then you send your input through your model. You get an output. You compute some loss function. In this case, it's a cross entropy loss. And then you call loss out backward, and automatically the gradients are computed for you for all the weights with respect to the loss. And then you do the optimizer.step, which does the gradient decent step. And typically, you would see your loss go down if your data is nice, it's well behaved, and everything. Um, the other thing we do have in PyTorch is that we have, we have a highly scalable distributed backend. So you can actually scale your neural network training to multiple GPUs, multiple machines. And uh, we've spent a lot of time optimizing this, so you can expect pretty high performance. Um, but generally, our distributed model is a bit too uh, Grand, it, a bit too fine grained for general users. So what we also provide is what we call a distributed data parallel. So if you have a particular training loop, what all you have to do to use our distributed data parallel is a one line change where you wrap your model in a container that we provide called NN.distributed data parallel. And then your model now is parallelized over as many machines that are set up in your, for your job as, as you want. So the input um, will be um, sharded over all these uh, machines, and you will have parallelizable uh, compute. So if you actually, uh, uh, like one of the things I, I mentioned is PyTorch is highly scalable. Uh, here's an example of one of the very, very popular neural network workloads. Uh, um, you are doing ImageNet training, that is, we're building a vision model uh, to classify various uh, categories based on the input image. So for example, if you send in a cat, it'll try to say it's a cat. So this, this model, uh, it's running on um, uh, each of the graphs shows how many nodes it's running on. So the last one, for example, uh, the, the uh, leftmost one uh, is, uh, is running on eight nodes, 64 GPUs. And uh, the green bar is the theoretical peak, the, the maximum speed you can run it on if, if, you, if you linearly scale uh, your, your, uh, your uh, training and your communication cost is zero. Uh, and so we're pretty close to green both on whether you run it on infinite band-based clusters or if you run it on Ethernet-based clusters. Uh, and uh, another example um, is uh, like we, we also have uh, examples in NLP that also achieve uh, pretty close to uh, peak performance. One of the things I wanted to talk about was you can actually use PyTorch today in MLflow uh, if you use MLflow uh, from Databricks. Uh, there is an MLflow.pytorch, uh, and it, uh, it does the model saving and checkpointing and uh, loading for you. What, what you could do is you can actually train your model via MLflow, and then you can load it up um, in a REST server, or um, you, can, you can take your model and like, like pump it, like do a lot of inference, um, like parallel inference via like Spark. Um, so there are more resources. Actually, I'm, like the Databricks people uh, have good tutorials on how to use PyTorch with MLflow, also integrate into plotting uh, like and TensorBoard integrations as well. Uh, I think you'll like it. Um, the, one of the things I wanted to mention was like I told you what PyTorch is, uh, and you probably are uh, going to ask me like why do I care? Like tell me more. Like there's also other alternatives like there's TensorFlow, Keras, 
there's, there's many other tools, like why should I use PyTorch? One of the things that we provide uh, uniquely is um, we integrate really, really well with the Python ecosystem. As I mentioned earlier, we have a nice NumPy bridge. So if you actually want to integrate PyTorch into part of your pipeline and the other part of your same modeling pipeline has SciPy, scikit-learn, uh, it's very easy to do. We actually show, uh, we have a tutorial to show how you can have part of your neural network model uh, with PyTorch API and like actually like in the middle you want to create a, a particular part of your model using SciPy for example, that's totally uh, legit. We, we have um, we have a tutorial showcasing that, for example, for signal processing. Um, the other thing we provide is we actually provide a model zoo for vision models, for text models. We provide pre-trained weights. So you can actually start your uh, modeling by loading one of our state-of-the-art pre-trained models and then fine-tune on your data from there. Now, uh, PyTorch is a fairly low-level library, especially if you're not familiar with deep learning. Uh, so some of the interesting uh, packages uh, uh, like in, Py in the PyTorch ecosystem do provide higher-level APIs. I'll talk about them in a, in a second. Uh, there's two packages to do probabilistic programming. Uh, if you're interested in uh, building, uh, building all kinds of um, symbolic models to do more, uh, more uh, fine-grained reasoning. Uh, we also, uh, Pyro, by the way, is from uh, Uber, and uh, ProbTorch is from the North Northeastern University. Uh, and we also have a package from Cornell that provides Gaussian processes if you want to do uh, hyperparameter auto, auto ML kind of uh, things, then Gaussian processes are really, really useful for that. Um, the other thing we do, uh, both at Facebook and in the PyTorch ecosystem, several other companies and universities, they release state-of-the-art models, um, both uh, the, the training code, if you want to train these models for, on your data from scratch, or they provide pre-trained weights so you can take the model and then just use it in, uh, in your own pipeline as inference engine. Uh, as an example, um, on, the, uh, on this side is uh, OpenNMT, which is a collaboration between uh, Harvard and uh, Sistran and a few other uh, people trying to basically push the state of the art on uh, machine translation. That is, like give a sentence in one language, pump out the sentence in a different language. Uh, the, on, the, on this side is uh, Facebook's own FairSeq toolkit. Again, this, is, uh, this provides uh, state-of-the-art or near state-of-the-art models for various text processing, either machine translation or uh, language modeling um, or uh, classification uh, and so on. Um, the, the another um, strong uh, package in the PyTorch ecosystem is from Allen AI, the Allen Institute for AI, and uh, it's called Allen NLP. And it has various text processing tasks that you can actually integrate into your pipeline. For example, with MLflow, um, it has uh, things like, uh, like doing uh, comprehension. So machine comprehension means you can actually like, feed in your entire uh, text database that you have and then ask questions. And then uh, it does neural machine comprehension to try to uh, give you an answer. And the questions can be in natural language query. As an example, um, I want to show, like, they have an online demo that you can actually go to allennlp.org or .com and, uh, .org, and uh, you, can, you can play with it online. You can uh, enter, like, a passage that, let's say, from your own data, and then you can ask a question in natural language, and then it will actually not only tell you what it thinks is the answer, but it'll also highlight like which, like why it thought it was the answer as well. This is just, uh, and it, like there are various models that power this, this task. So Allen NLP has state-of-the-art NLP modeling for a bunch of uh, NLP tasks and you can load them from like the Python API or you can also like load them up as a web service all built on top of PyTorch. Uh, the other uh, package I wanna talk briefly about is the FastAI package. Uh, they just hit 1.0 yesterday. This is something that 
I feel like it would be um, very, uh, like it would connect uh, to this audience really well. Um, it's a high level library. Uh, it's built by uh, Jeremy Howard, who was the former, pre who was the president of Kaggle, uh, and also um, did a, another company after, and Rachel Thomas, uh, who's um, also um, with a similar background. And also it's a crowdsourced community effort. And the, uh, there's also, the other part that's nice about this library is there's an online course that you can take that does deep learning 101 for you, especially if you're a programmer. Um, and you can read more on their blog about like what's new in like 1.0, what's new in FastAI itself. Uh, to give you like uh, a rough understanding of what FastAI provides, it provides state-of-the-art models in a few lines so that, um, and like one of the nice things about this library is it's built so that you can fine tune these state-of-the-art models on your own data, on whatever um, personal data you have. So uh, as an example, in these four lines here or five lines here, you are loading uh, your own data and then you're loading a state-of-the-art model and then you're just like fine tuning this model on the data that you, you have. Uh, and another example uh, is they actually have models uh, for tabular data as well. And they, they have uh, a mod, like they have like a couple of models uh, to do text classification. Again, it starts off with uh, a model that's pre-trained um, and then it fine tunes it on your own data. The result of that to find, like why do you start from a, a pre-trained model and fine tune it on your own data? It's because you then need very little data to actually uh, fine tune it. Like deep learning, as we know, is very, very hungry for data. But if you have lesser data, then it works out better um, if you fine tune it. So um, with that, I'm going to end. Uh, so PyTorch uh, uh, is, has been available for about a year and a half now. We're, uh, we're just about to hit 1.0. Uh, we released a 1.0 preview release as of two days ago. Uh, I think it's a great uh, way for you to uh, try to integrate deep learning, uh, especially with the higher level libraries that are in the PyTorch ecosystem, into your own pipelines. Uh, and uh, thanks for listening.